All right, we're back at it. You asked, I answer, and I'm gonna start to do these pretty regularly where you guys ask me questions, either send them in via DM, send me an email, and I'm gonna answer your questions live directly today on the phone. So before we get started, if you guys wanna take your finances to a whole nother level and hit every single financial goal that you have, go ahead and book a call with my team in the show notes below, and we'll see if you're a good fit for Budget Dog Academy where the average student is saving extra $20,000 per year. Think about that compounded. All right, our first question is from ez.eds.sinkers. That's my favorite part of this entire thing. It's just pronouncing the actual uh, tag names. So anyways, the question is, top five term life insurance policy carriers and reasoning why. I'm gonna make it even simpler. Don't even worry about going to independently value different insurance companies. Go with an independent broker, such as Policy Genius. I'll put in the show notes below for you guys. And they'll go shop independently every single thing on the market that's in line with your needs and they're going to find the lowest rates and then you can work with those individual insurance companies and it makes it a lot easier so this is what i do for all my insurances i actually have a free insurance guide as well now i'm going to go ahead and put those in my show notes below our second question is from mac design dollar cost averaging 101 let's make this real simple that's a good question so how do you explain dollar cost averaging that's a fancy term that wall street decided to create just to confuse the the masses let's make it really simple let's take a 401k so we're just gonna take a specific dollar amount on a periodic schedule and invest that, regardless of where the asset price is. This is a really, really good strategy for multiple reasons. It's automated for one, so you're taking the, the manual investment component out of there. You're not deciding when to invest and trying to time the market at all. It's really straightforward. So let's just say, for example, you have an asset that you're buying within your 401k, let's just say an S&P 500 fund, and it's worth $500 when you begin this process. And every two weeks, you put 500 bucks in. So the first week you buy one share, then the market goes up to $1,000 and then you're buying a half a share. Then the, the share price goes down to 250, but you still put the $500 in the third go around. And now you're buying two shares at that level. So the thing is with this is you're not timing the market, but you're automatically taking advantage of buying less at the top and buying more at the bottom. And this is the key behind dollar cost averaging. H to Hata underscore 11 asks, finishing college smart, question mark. Even if I'm not fully sure, I'm not that interested in any nine to five, to be honest. Great question. So I actually have a brother, two brothers, in fact, your age in college right now, 22 and 20. And what I always tell them is figure out where you wanna go. What, what's the goal of why you're going to college? College is a bridge. So it's not right or wrong to go to college. If it works for you and it gets you the, the degree that you want for the career that you want, go for it. If it's not what you're after in life, don't go to college. It's not that important if it's something not in line with what you're trying to achieve. So as a CPA myself, I had to go to college. I went to the University of Louisville, got a finance and accounting degree, and went on to get my CPA and worked at Deloitte. My ultimate goal was to work for the big four as a CPA. So I had to go through college for the bridge to get to the Deloitte job was exactly that. But if I was not trying to do that, if I wanted to go to trade school to become a plumber or a mechanic or something along nature of that, I would go to trade school because that would be the bridge to get me there. So think of it like that. Um, figure out what you're passionate about. What do you do in your free time? All those types of questions and just be real with yourself. There's no right or wrong. Don't let society pressure you. Okay, another question is Ash Pullman. 401k rollover into IRA, dot, 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 DCA, or reinvest all at once? Okay, great question, Ash. So the first things first is when you roll over into, um, from a 401k to an IRA, you gotta think of a few things. The very first is, is it Roth or traditional? If it's a Roth, you're gonna go from Roth to Roth, and therefore there's no tax consequence. If you're going traditional to rollover, there's still no tax consequence. The problem is, guys, I apologize. You probably hear my daughter screaming in the background. Let's just keep rolling it's not gonna stop. So anyways, if you go to the rollover IRA and your rollover IRA goes into the Roth, so you do the conversion, you will pay tax, so you gotta be aware of that. If you keep it in the rollover, that's fine. Now, the question is, do you wanna put the whole amount into the investment, all your investments, or do you want a dollar cost average in? If it were me, I would go ahead and take the money that I was investing in my 401k, take it to the rollover and invest the entire thing. Um, some people feel more confident dollar cost averaging. There's a lot of studies out there that say, if you have the lump sum, you're better off likely to lump sum that in, um, but there's no guarantee that's the better option 30, 40 years from now. All right, JOA6398 asks, how to save for a house? Great question. So first things first is you wanna consider the price of the house that you're buying. And then you wanna back into the down payment that it requires. Let's just say you're after a $200,000 house and you wanna put 25% down. Not saying that's right, not saying that's wrong, just what the example is gonna be. So you put 
25% of 200,000 down, that's $50,000. And you figure, you know, over the next three years, I'm gonna accomplish this $50,000 goal. So at that point in time, you gotta figure out, how do I save $50,000 in three years? So all you gotta do is $50,000, and I'll do it on my calculator because I'm not that fa fast at math, divided by 36 months, which is three years, is about $1,400 roughly per month. Now we wanna take that $1,400 and put it into like a high yield savings account of some sort, maybe Marcus by Goldman Sachs or Ally Savings, something really, really simple and not complicate or invest. And my daughter is going crazy in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear or not, but we're gonna keep rolling. So assuming you do that, at the end of those 36 months or three years, you're gonna have that $50,000 to put towards that down payment. A rule of thumb that you really wanna keep in the back of your mind, and I don't care if you're from California or, or uh, New York or anything like that, because I'm sorry, I know you guys get mad at this, but the math is the math. And when you think about the average payment being 52% of someone's take home pay in America, which is absolutely alarming, that's the number, we really wanna to get to the 25% or below. So if you're making $4,000, Per month from a take-home perspective thousand dollars should be the minimum payment for your mortgage that's including principal interest taxes insurance and PMI if you have it so you want to consider all of that in the 25% or less of your take-home pay all right the last question is from D Souza Mitchell this is a great question so pay off your mortgage on primary residence or buy an investment property so we paid off our mortgage our primary residence at 29 years old we started at like 27 years old and knocked it out by 29 it was very controversial. I have a lot of content regarding this in my blog, YouTube, uh, my Twitter, my Instagram, my pinned post, all those kind of things. So you guys can go read why we did that. It was the best decision ever. And looking backwards, we actually won the math argument, which is the whole debate of this entire thing is like the math, the math, the math. We happened to win that argument based on how fast we paid, based on where the market was. And that's not overly important, but when this conversation comes up, that's always part of the argument or part of the debate. So. I think the question really, there's no right or wrong. Assuming that you've done a few things, I think the emergency fund needs to be funded. Obviously your bills need to be paid timely, um, but you're probably not having that problem if you, you're at the, asking this question. Emergency fund is fully funded. And then you wanna make sure that you're investing at least 15% of your gross income into retirement and retirement's not gonna be thrown off by doing this decision. So once you do that, then it's, it's up to you. I think it's a personal preference of what you wanna do with your money over and above the requirements to hit retirement. So me personally, we paid off our mortgage. We invested 20% of our gross income during this time. We paid it off and now we're looking for a rental property in the near future. So we went step by step by step to do all of these things and I think anybody can. But just make sure that this aligns with your values and your goals and your family's needs and you can't go wrong either way here. All right, that's a wrap. If you guys wanna book the free call with my team to see if you're a good fit for Budget Dog Academy to hit all of your financial goals, go ahead and hit the show notes below and we'll get that scheduled. And I'm gonna to continue to answer your questions, so feel free to send me DMs, send me tweets, send me uh, Instagram messages, anything that you need. I can answer here and I will continue to answer these for you guys because I hope it's very helpful. And leave comments in the comment section below if you have any questions on what we talked about today. I'll make sure I answer every single one and I will see you guys in the next video.